ladies and gentlemen, we just hit 2,000 subscribers. All right, actually, I hit 2,000 subscribers a few days ago, but we're not going to talk about that. First and foremost, thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for 2,000 subscribers. It literally means so much to me, I cannot put it into the words. I kind of want to make this video to share my journey uh, from 1,000 subscribers to 2,000 subscribers uh, to kind of help anyone who is a YouTuber or is becoming a YouTuber with some helpful YouTube tips for their YouTube journey. Now this video isn't really going to have a lot of editing in it, it's kind of going to be more like a little podcast thing, so sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and let's begin. When I hit 1k, it was sort of just like a slow grind to 1k. I kind of just hit it because I was on the grind for so long, it's not like I had this astronomical boost of growth. Around that time is also when I started becoming more invested in my YouTube channel, where I really started to watch a lot of tutorials on YouTube about how to grow your channel and whatnot. And I mean, at the end of the day, you're the only one who can decide how you want to grow your channel. So I was watching all these tutorials, I was trying to figure out how I could boost my growth and whatnot because I was in a bit of a low point. Uh, analytics weren't exactly up and I was kind of just trying to get more subscribers in general. So I was watching all these videos and I was doing everything they were saying, so in my mind I was pretty much doing everything right, but it kind of angered me because I wasn't showing any signs whatsoever of growth. I mean, I was getting a good amount of views, but I was not gaining that many subscribers, which with a YouTube channel, or at least just my personality, subscribers instead of views is what you really care about here. So you fast forward a few months and nothing is really changing, my views are staying the same, and my subscribers aren't exactly going up either. Because of this, I became very unmotivated to have anything to do with Prodigy whatsoever, which as you can guess, became very unmotivating to make content. And then that's when I took about a month long break. And in that break, I was planning to quit Prodigy YouTube. I was actually planning to quit within a few months because in a few months from that time was my two year anniversary and I figured that I'd just stick it out until my two year anniversary and then I would quit. And so I thought about it for a while and at the end of the day I realized that I really didn't want to quit. But I also didn't want to come back and just stay in the same spot that I was. I wanted to not only improve my analytics but also improve my content. And at this time, the videos that I were producing were high-octane, high-energy videos with a lot of editing, and of course that angered me because I wasn't getting a lot of subscribers because I thought I would be with the amount of editing and stuff I was putting in my videos. And I mean, this is really when I started to make the change. I started to look back at my old content and try and figure out what was I doing right that made people want to subscribe back then. Because my old content, if you look back at it, it did not have a lot of editing, if any, and there were a lot of choppy and rough parts. And what I realized is that people actually like that sort of stuff. When I make these high energy videos, I'm cutting out parts that I think are unnecessary. And what it turns out is that what gets people to subscribe is when they relate to you, whenever they share an idea that you have, or they agree with something that you're saying, or whatever the case may be, that's what gets them to subscribe. So by cutting out parts that I thought were unnecessary, I was actually cutting out my subscribers by not giving them what they wanted. And so when I did finally make that commitment to come back, I just kind of made a deal with myself, and I said, you know what, if I do come back, I'm not going to make these high energy videos where I'm putting in all my time and energy into these. I'm just going to make videos that I'm proud of and that I like and that I would watch. And so that's when I just started to make these more fun videos where I'm just talking into the microphone. I'm not putting in as much editing as I was, but just enough to where it's entertaining. Now my analytics are absolutely up, subscribers are really at an all time high now, and I just feel better about my content, I just, I'm, I don't feel like I'm putting in 100% of my time and energy into a video. Now don't get me wrong, it's never a bad thing to want to improve your content, it's a good thing, always. But my problem was is that I took it to the extreme and I made it more of a deal than it should have been. At the end of the day, doing what you want to is YouTube. Being a YouTuber, 
is doing what you want to that's the core essence of making videos if you want to put out high octane high energy videos then that's your choice it just wasn't the right thing for me i hope this video was able to help you out or at least provide a bit of insight into what the mind of a youtuber is thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the flip flop